Hi, my name is Fraser. I'm an ethnobotanist and horticulturalist, and I'm on a research mission to assess the sustainability of the emerging international trade in ornamental plants in Southeast Asia. My aim is to use horticulture as a tool for conservation to provide a sustainable form of income for communities in the rainforest. I'm doing this because there's a growing concern of the ornamental plant trade all across the tropics, which is having an impact on the environment and wildlife. Orchids get a lot of attention in the illegal wildlife trade. Because of their colonial elitist legacy, the large orchid societies, and the amount of money they make in the illegal wildlife trade, including money laundering. Unsurprisingly, new nurseries are emerging to cultivate native plants. For example, your Hoyas, Nepenthes, Orchids, and Syndapsis and other native aeroids. While others are specializing in new non-native species such as Anthuriums, which have also been seized for, from illegal wildlife poachers. But now is the time for the new ornamental tropical plants to get the attention they finally deserve because they're increasingly flooding the plant market and we need to have that difficult conversation about sustainability of the supply chain and the impact we're all having just for the latest plant on the rainforests. As Frank Kingdom Ward said in Land of the Blue Poppies, the greedy scramble for new species, new varieties, new strains and new hybrids just because they are new is both pathetic and vulgar. We all suffer from this disease, the nurserymen who want the plants and the botanists who want to name them, just as much as collectors themselves. Every collector rejoices in a new species. He would not be human if he did not. My research and evidence from social media suggests that, that rural communities have increased their use of wild forest plants to earn an income from the lucrative ornamental plant trade. They are being sold to national resellers, then they're being sold to international resellers, then they're being scaled up for mass propagation, and then finally they're hit in mass global markets. The plant hunters and rural nurseries that I have met are the beginning of this supply chain. After a day of hunting in the Kapoas forest, I asked about the resellers or plant brokers if they ever come to the forest and how they begin their supply chain. Kalau untuk orang pembeli atau pengumpul pernah ke sini cuma bukan yang orang dari luar negeri. Oh yang caluk udah tangan kedua atau tangan ketiga gitu pembelinya. The resellers are having a big impact on the rural hunters. Ya, sama. Untuk di sosial media itu pengaruhnya sangat besar ya. Apalagi kalau saya pribadi, IG kan. Nah, di IG itu kan rata-rata kita udah kenal teman-teman juga baik dari kawan-kawan petani pembudidaya, ya kan, kawan-kawan reseller, kawan seller dan eksportir itu semua ada di situ. Jadi sangat besar pengaruh media sosial ini bagi penjualan Hoya. My inquiry first took me here, to the communities of West Kalimantan along the Kapu West River. I met a lot of new and experienced hunters who have built new nurseries in this region to cultivate and sell their native plants. More plant hunters are emerging to find new forms, new species, and the much prized variegated forms. In these communities that live in the swamps and rainforest region, it is here I first learned about the challenges facing plant hunters and why my proposition for a wide importance under threat species like Hoyt Undulata would be difficult. The fact is, another hunter will just take it. Yang pastinya kalau kita mengembalikan ke hutan, apabila orang lain masuk, itu habis diambil bang. Oh, bukan kita mau melestarikannya ke hutan, cuma orang yang dari luar itu yang masuk ke hutan ngambil bang. Hunters from outside their villages are coming to their local forests and extracting everything they can find. Sebenarnya nggak ada yang secara langsung tahu, tapi karena jenis hoya undulata ini sangat diminati dan banyak dipesan hunter itu kan perginya kemana aja tempat yang kemungkinan ada atau ada hutan jadi mereka datangi ketika ketemu dan benar itu yang dipesan ya udah berapapun banyak yang ada diambil hoy undulata used to be widespread in west kalimantan It actually has a symbiosis with ants who live underneath it with moss. But due to unsustainable plant hunting and poaching, it is now considered endangered in the wild. It's not just the over-extraction of plants, it's also a lack of care. Some hunters are just dropping or discarding unwanted plants 
and leave them on the jungle floor to rot. Kadang kalau saya nemunya, misal bekas hunting orang kan, daunnya kebalik, misal tanaman tanah kan, kita kebalikan lagi akarnya biar ngesap ke dalam. Nah, kalau sejenis hoya kan, kalau udah ke tanah, rawan mati, pasti mati kebanyakan kan, kita sangkutkan ke kayu biar ya imbat lagi. Gitu oh. ya. Kadang kan kasihan kita lihat. Oh, mungkin saat ini kita nak mulu. Satu saat kan, sananya kita mulu, ah masih keingat lokasi, tinggal nujuin kayak kemarin kan, nah masih terjaga misal alam sini kita bisa buat untuk dipandang lagi kan, kalau sananya ndak diambil ndak di dijaga lagi kan, ibarat bisa jadi punah kena ya mati. So what are some of the key drivers that are impacting hunters to be more sustainable? So even though some of these hunters are farmers and have a great knowledge of their local forest, they do lack the knowledge of how to propagate to create more stock for sale, to reduce wild punt hunting, and for the potential for your wilding. Yang terjadi udah pastinya ekonomi udah pasti berkurang kan, nggak bisa lagi jualan. Makanya kami butuh ilmu atau pengetahuan untuk mengambilkan suatu tanaman tersebut tanpa di habitat alam. Kami perlu banget ilmunya, gitu. So based upon observations and interviews, resellers with limited botanical knowledge keep changing their selling strategy. From no ID, then to plants affiliated with a species, and then to a location variety, and then back in a loop, all to make a profit and see which one works the most. Many of these resellers don't want to share their plants with taxonomists, probably in fear that it will reduce their profits because it will be found to be a known species. Of course, not all resellers are bad, but they are playing their part in the over-extraction of wild plants. So what are some of these community-based solutions that can help protect forests from over-hunting and support rewilding? Uh, kalau kita untuk menjaga ketahanan salah satu tanaman di alam, yang hasil apa, bukaan lahan oleh masyarakat atau perkebunan, saya rasa sangat penting kita uh, mencari lokasi, mencari lokasi yang bisa terjaga dengan aman, contohnya di uh, areal hutan adat atau hutan dusun atau tanah desa, kas desa yang uh, punya potensi tidak digunakan untuk dibuka atau lahan pertanian atau lahan kebun. Uh, kebetulan di sini uh, saya juga lagi menyusun dan sudah konsultasi dengan perangkat desa untuk uh, mencoba menggali potensi tersebut karena di daerah kami khusus di Batang Tarang di Kabupaten Sanggau ada dua lokasi yang uh, rawa yang itu milik uh, hutan adat dan saya juga berencana akan mengajak uh, perangkat desa bagaimana memanfaatkan lahan tersebut untuk konservasi tumbuhan alam yang punya potensi untuk kita jadikan sumber pengasihan baru bagi masyarakat baik itu untuk dijual tanamannya atau kita jadikan salah satu aset wisata wisata hortikultura khususnya di bidang tanaman hias karena di selama ini kan belum ada kondisi di Kalimantan Barat belum ada wisata khusus tanaman hias apalagi ya tanaman hias dari alam dan punya potensi juga untuk jadi tempat penelitian ya, ada dari perguruan tinggi atau dari uh, media luar negeri yang ingin melihat potensi alam atau jenis-jenis tanaman yang ada di sini di wilayah kita kita punya tempat seperti itu itu mimpi saya dan mudah-mudahan uh, mimpi itu didengar atau terbaca oleh orang yang punya kompetensi atau kepentingan di bidang tersebut sehingga kita bisa berkolaborasi dengan pemerintah untuk mengembangkan daerah tersebut atau hutan tersebut untuk jadikan kawasan konservasi. So that has been my first introduction. What have your thoughts and insights been into the new ornamental plant trade from the tropics? Do leave your comments below and do follow me on YouTube or Instagram for more updates on this topic.